Welcome to Weekday Somatics. So if, uh, if you're able to do so, uh, it would be wonderful to explore today by sitting, but the moment I say that, Notice, notice what happens in you. Notice what, what voices begin to stir, and what kind of energy that has. So be honest about it. If you're if your truth is not sitting today, then don't sit. But if you can truthfully sit, um, then it would be wonderful to explore sitting. Uh, the reason being I'd like to do a few things that for many people will be slightly more effective if done sitting, but notice what voice speaks to you the moment I say that <laughs> and what kind of energy that is. So if the voice is saying, oh, I have to, if I don't, then I won't get the benefits. It won't work. It won't be good. Then so you don't need to listen to that, that voice. So whatever posture you choose, choose it honestly, choose it truthfully, choose it lovingly. And the usual guidelines apply. So we'll, whether you're lying or sitting or whatever posture you choose we'll, to the best of your ability, uh, let it be a posture that you have confidence in so that you can remain restfully still in it. Again, to the best of your ability, this is not about achieving perfection. It's about revealing the innate perfection, which is not going to be in the way that we think. So we're, we're, we've chosen a posture, lovingly, gently, confidently. And then we're going to commit to this for the next little bit. Just at, for this first part, we're going to do a couple of different things today. For, so for the first part, you're committing to this posture. And then if you need to adjust afterward, that would be fine. Of course, if you need to adjust at any time, it's always okay. But to the best of your ability, commit to this posture for the next little bit so that you it provides you with the support and the boundaries that allow you to explore your experience, your conditioning, your habits, and to discover something new. To discover true support on a deeper level. Because if we're constantly adjusting, then what are we doing? We're signaling the support's not here or the support's not adequate. Or I need to do something more in order to receive the support. So notice how important that is and how powerful you are. You, your power is so great that your mere intention shapes your reality. Very, very powerful. 
So your intention to be restfully still committed to this posture instantly unlocks something so that now that pure potential within is able to express and you're choosing to allow it to express through this posture, through this commitment, so that you can discover something new. So feel your body, feel the connection of your body to the surface under you. And if you are sitting, then if possible, Allow your hands to be resting on your thighs or knees. And you may have your eyes open or closed, whatever is more comfortable for you. If you're lying on your back, I, 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 I'll only give the directions for uh, sitting or for lying on the back. If you're not lying on the back, or sitting, then you'll need to modify. So if, if you're lying on the back, then just have your arms resting at your sides. So in any case, let the arms rest as fully as possible. So become aware of the shoulders and let them become as restful as possible. Become aware of the upper arms and let them be as restful as possible. And notice that your intention is actually enough. It's anything that we add to that overcomplicates it. So if you're thinking, oh, it's not working, or it's not enough, or I'm not sure I'm doing it right, well, then it's just because you're doing too much. So become aware of all the unnecessary wasted energy going toward those kinds of thoughts or doubts or whatever else drains the energy. And instead, you can just gently release that and allow your intention to be the vehicle that directs this power in a very, very powerful way. So again, be aware of the upper arms and let them be deeply relaxed, restful. So notice when the arms are restful, then they surrender to gravity. So you don't need to pull the arms down. They become heavy because they naturally are. Become aware of the elbows. Let the elbows be restful. Let the forearms be restful. So consciously releasing any unnecessary effort. Let the wrists be restful. I'm often surprised at how much unconscious tension I hold in the wrists. Become aware of the hands the palms of the hands, the backs of the hands, the knuckles, the thumbs, and each of the fingers all the way to the fingertips and let all of the hands and fingers become very restful. So be, become aware of the entire arms from shoulder to fingertip and be aware of the arms as restful. You might notice uh, a weight to them 
you might even notice that they almost seem to be glued to whatever they're resting on. So if you're lying down, then it may seem as if they're glued to the surface you're lying on, or if you're sitting, it may seem that they're glued to your thighs or knees. Now, Bring your awareness to your upper arms and shoulders and let your upper arms and shoulders remain completely anchored. So feel from the shoulder down through the upper arm all the way to the elbow and let the, the energy in that entire region anchor all the way to the ground so that they are a source of confidence for you. And with that awareness, then begin to very, very slowly explore lifting the wrists toward the ceiling so that the elbows will bend and the wrists will begin to lift up from either your thighs or the surface that you're lying on very slowly. So the upper arms, the shoulders, the elbows remain anchored and the wrists begin to lift toward the ceiling. So the elbows bend and you can be aware of the hands. So let the hands be relaxed. So the wrists remain Relax as the wrists are moving in the direction of the ceiling. Now, if you're sitting, that means that the wrists are moving toward the shoulders. If you're lying on your back, it means that the wrists are moving toward the ceiling. And if you're lying on your back, then you only need to, the, the, mo the highest, the, the greatest range would be just uh, vertical. You don't need to bring them to the shoulders. But if you're sitting, then they might come all the way up to the shoulders, depending on how bulky your clothing is. <laughs> Says the guy with five layers on. And then slowly lower So we're just reversing that movement, allowing the forearms and wrists and hands to return downward. Try to let everything be as restful as possible. So obviously there's some exertion going on, but we want to be really clear about that so that we're not utilizing any unnecessary effort. And let them come fully to rest. Notice again the entire arms and notice what's different. 
So your experience of your arms should be different, is, is definitely different. But we have to acknowledge that consciously, actually tune into it and don't make any adjustments. What I mean by that is don't do something unconsciously to get back to your habitual state because your habitual state is one of chronic unconscious exertion. So this feels different, it is different. And take a moment to really surrender so that you can have a new understanding of surrender. That surrender is actually an inner experience. It's not defined by how it looks on the outside. So you may even perceive that your arms, you may perceive any number of things, but you may possibly perceive that your arms aren't fully in the right position, that maybe they need to go down more or something like that. And just be aware of the temptation to indulge your usual habits. So don't pull, don't push, don't strain, don't shrug, don't move anything intentionally. Simply release, surrender, so that you can experience yourself in a new way. Okay, let's do that one more time. So at your own pace, slowly lifting, the wrists upward toward the ceiling, bending the elbows, letting the upper arms and shoulders remain where they are so that they're not swinging around or making any unnecessary movements. See if you can allow yourself to breathe without it being forced or without holding the breath. And then slowly at your own pace, whenever you're ready, you can again, lower the forearms and wrists and hands so they come back to resting. And be really aware of all of the subtle movements and let everything be a surrender, a release so that you're not pulling or pushing or straining or shrugging or any of those usual kinds of habits. And let it all go as much as you can. And again, you'll likely notice that this is different and you can notice that for most of us, our brains instantly say different means bad. I don't like it, says the brain. Got to get back to the, the right way, which is the habitual way. Even though the habitual way, well, let's be honest, it sucks. But the brain just was to keep going back there. It's a habit. So be willing to be with the newness, the difference, the change. And don't be so quick to judge it. Don't be so quick to determine that it's right or wrong or good or bad or anything. Just be curious about it and see what it reveals because it will continue to reveal more newness. The more that we open to newness, the more newness it reveals to us. And then that newness becomes integrated so that our new habits are informed by that newness, which is coming from outside of our habits. So our habits are reshaped by a greater authority, life itself. Okay, so now you've had the experience of doing that twice. Let's see what happens if we make one 
change. So before we make the movement this time, I'd like you to become aware of your body and its connection to the earth. And I want you to be aware of how you are holding back from a deeper surrender to the earth. So become aware in your somatic experience of how you're holding back, withholding, or trying to lift yourself up away, or trying to strain or get something uh, held together. And release that and actually begin to consciously direct your energy flow so that you are connecting consciously to the earth. Perceive that connection all the way to the core of the earth. From your body, one energetic connection, one, and it goes beyond energy, to be honest with you. So we'll just forget about energy for a moment and just say, it's a connection. Whether you are a good visualizer or not, whether you think it's working or not, don't be distracted by those concerns because your intention is all that's necessary. So if you just have a sincere intention, then just trust that, that it's working and then you'll prove it to yourself because momentarily you will test it out. So intend this connection all the way to the center of the earth and feel that to the best of your ability. So notice where you are holding back, notice where you're clenching, gripping, and surrender that through this connection that you have to the center of the earth so that you can actually begin to perceive at least on some level, even if not consciously, this real connection, it's a real honest connection that really does exist. And you can begin to uh, cultivate that, strengthen it, so send these roots all the way to the center of the earth and feel that rootedness, how that rootedness provides you with stability and anchor deep into the earth. Now, continue to be aware of that anchor, that connection, those roots all the way down to the center of the earth. And this time, in a moment, I'm going to suggest again that we explore the same movement. This time, as we do it, as you lift the wrists, simultaneously, consciously intend to send energy down into these roots, down into the earth so that you can actually perceive that traveling downward, creating greater stability and rootedness and see how that affects your experience of the movement. So begin to explore that now. So slowly lifting the wrists and at the same time, consciously intending and directing energy downward, down, down, down through the body, through the entire body, down through those roots, and notice the experience. It's a very distinct experience. It's a very powerful experience. And for those who are satisfied with that, you may leave it at that. And for anybody who wishes to do so, you could even take this a little bit further and have a perhaps a stronger experience of it. 
if you wish. Once your wrists are raised as high toward the ceiling as is comfortable to do, and you can do this if you're lying or if you're sitting, uh, but only if you're confident and desirous to do so. Don't do it otherwise. You can actually begin to then lift the wrists further, which means that you're gonna to have to bend at the shoulders so that they're moving upward. And at the same time, you're intending to descend energy down through the roots so that you perceive and experience that stability and anchoredness. And then you can reverse that. And again, that's optional. You don't have to do the second part there if you don't wish to. It's always true. You don't ever have to do anything. But if you do, then as you reverse that, be aware of what a big difference that will make in your shoulder joints and your experience of your shoulders and your chest will make a huge difference. So honor that and be aware so that you don't indulge the habit of pulling or pushing or any of that, trying to adjust to get back to the old way. Okay. So once you're satisfied with that and you've come back to a arms resting position, uh, we're gonna take a few moments now to explore a few more things. And uh, these will not be movement based. So if you prefer to change your position, if you're finding your current position to be strenuous, uh, you have my, my permission, not that you need it. You have my permission to do so. And now I'd like to invite you to Bring your awareness to the breath. So we're going to take a few moments on breath awareness. So to start, just become aware of the breath and notice whatever you notice. So don't try to control the breath. Just be aware of it. And through that awareness, start to observe any unconscious habits that now are becoming conscious of holding the breath or restricting the breath, turning the breath around at unnecessarily premature points in the cycle. So allow for the exhalation to be relaxed and complete and satisfying. Totally non-forced, so there should be no force whatsoever. It should not, you should not be pushing, but do let it be satisfying and complete and natural. And you'll find that it's naturally elongates. Don't allow it to elongate so much that you start gasping for air though. And as you inhale at your own natural pace, just be aware of the inhalation. Notice where it, where there are jumps or spasms or where you're straining or where it feels like it's too much or where it feels that you can't get enough and relax. Let the breath be gentle, satisfying.
let the breath highlight where you're still holding strain in the abdomen, in the back, in the chest, in the throat, in the face. And choose to soften and release the unnecessary effort so that the breath begins to become smoother, gentler, more satisfying, more pleasant, more pleasurable. And when you become aware of some unnecessary effort or strain and you discover how to consciously release that through intention, even if it's just a tiny little bit, then remain aware of that and remain, remain committed to that release so that as you continue through the natural breathing cycle, you can continue to be aware of that release and not reintroduce it unnecessarily so that your breathing becomes freer and more pleasurable in this way, bit by bit. This is not about taking deep breaths. It's not taking, about taking big breaths. It's not about maximizing the breath. It's about being present to the breath and releasing the unnecessary habits of strain. And naturally, through that process, the breath does become more complete and satisfying and pleasurable. So we'll just take a few more minutes exploring this at your own pace. And take a few more breaths and on each of these breaths, be aware of that connection to the earth as an actual felt experience. And again, you may not be consciously aware of it or you may be consciously aware of it, but in any case, just choose to intend and know that that is enough. So have the intention to be aware of that connection with the earth and to notice how the breath 
relates to that, what the rhythm of the breath and the rhythm of the connection to the earth, how those two rhythms form a third rhythm of the combined rhythms. There's an interplay. And don't worry about getting the right answer. Just trust in your direct experience so that you can allow for the breath to augment your connection to the earth and your connection to the earth to augment your breath so that each becomes enriched by the other. And there's this blossoming holistic experience of yourself here and now. Now, gently peer into your heart. And again, if you think, I don't know how to do that, or I'm not having the right experience, don't worry about that. Your intention is enough. Just intend to peer into your heart and to discover here in a new, fresh way who you are in this world what your purpose is what your true heartfelt desire is and it's not about a particular expression it's it's not about how it will look it's not about what the worldly rewards will be. It's about recognizing what's already here in your heart, your true desire. It's an inner subtle posture. And we can call it by many names, but whatever it is, it's good. It's when you recognize this, you feel uplifted, you feel whole, you feel joyful, you feel grateful, you feel enthusiastic. So don't look for something else. Look for this. It's very innocent. It's very pure. It's who you really are. When you see it, when you catch glimpses of it, when you perceive it or feel it for a moment, you it's like your soul is singing. It's light, it's gentle, it's easy, it's buoyant. And it's not about the details. It's not about what it should look like. It's just this pure perception, pure feeling, grace, happiness, gratitude, ease, comfort, love, Surrender, joy, bliss. So this exists within you. This is the truth of who you are in this world, what you, your purpose is. You are here to express this truth. You're here to be authentically yourself. When you are authentically yourself, this is your experience of yourself. Joyful, blissful, happy, fulfilled, buoyant. So whether you have a big experience or a very, 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 very subtle experience, it doesn't matter. Even if you say, I don't think I'm experiencing it. Again, your intention, your willingness is enough, regardless of what you think you're experiencing. So just 
to whatever degree is possible for you to do so now. Connect with, acknowledge, recognize this inner truth here in your heart, this subtle posture. And with each breath, allow this subtle inner posture to be enlivened so that it very, very, very gently expands. And maintain this awareness of your connection to the earth all the way rooted to the core of the earth, one with the earth. Be aware of that connection and consciously intend and choose to surrender to that connection so that all of the blockages and obstructions are washed clean so that this connection nourishes the earth and nourishes you. And then you can begin to perceive how this connection also nourishes and enlivens this truth in your heart. So that this truth in your heart, this gentle, subtle inner posture is enlivened by the breath and it's enlivened by the earth, enlivened by your connection with the earth. So that you can begin to experience it gently expanding, filling your heart with light. Notice you might even experience some sensations of it, a vibration, a tingling, or a warmth, or a coolness. Let it continue to expand, gently beginning to illuminate your entire inner body. Become aware of your organs and consciously allow this inner blessing to bless your organs with light and love and generosity and healing so that your liver is blessed and your kidneys are blessed. So if you're not aware of where these organs are, your liver is on the right side uh, of the, the upper right side of the abdomen, just below the rib cage. So consciously allow that blessing to illuminate and send healing energy to your liver. And your kidneys are on the back, one on each side, at least for most of us. Even if you have had a kidney removed, you can still, the energetic, imprint is still there so you can still effectively send the healing blessings to that part of your body so on the right and the left sides the, the back just at the base of the rib cage let that healing light nourish the kidneys consciously release any gripping or tension so that you can really receive that healing energy in that area. Let that healing energy illuminate your stomach, 
and your spleen. Let it illuminate the intestines. Let it illuminate the lungs. Let it illuminate the entire inner body. The bones, all the organs, all the muscles, all of the soft tissue. And let that radiant inner posture, that inner light, send blessings outward, blessing your home, blessing your loved ones, blessing your neighbors, Blessing all the wild animals and the plants. Blessing the water. Blessing the air. Blessing all the people whose work although invisible to you, still reaches you and touches you. The truck drivers, the doctors, the lawyers, the government workers, the janitors, the factory workers, Send blessings to your entire region and let that expand so that you're blessing your entire country. And then send blessings to this entire earth. From the core of the earth all the way to the atmosphere and then beyond, blessing this whole solar system, blessing the entire galaxy, blessing this entire universe, blessing all universes. And again, become aware of the physical body. And start to be aware of the body from head to toe, including the head, all the parts of the head, inside and outside, the shoulders, the arms, the hands, the chest and upper back, the abdomen and the lower back, the thighs, 
the knees, the lower legs, and the feet. Again, become aware of the breath. You become aware of the connection with the earth. And move your fingers slowly to reacquaint yourself with moving the body. And when you're ready to do so, you may begin to slowly explore opening the eyes, that is assuming that you have closed the eyes, and do so so that you don't disturb anything. So that this inner posture, this inner truth, this inner light can integrate more smoothly and completely and that it can truly radiate into all parts of your life. So there's no rush, you can take your time with that. Um, I'm gonna say a few words to wrap up the formal inquiry. And for those who are here live, uh, I'm not, not going to do a and a today because I have another meeting scheduled starting in a few minutes. So uh, today we did a couple of powerful things. First, so over the last several months, we've really cultivated this ability to draw in a, uh, an access, a wellspring of what we could call cosmic energy. And now we're beginning to ground that so that it can have very definite effects in our lives, practically speaking, because we don't want to be half-baked. We don't want to have, say, oh, look at me, I've got all this amazing spiritual power, but our lives are a mess. Because <laughs> that's, not, that's not the whole truth. So we want to be integrated. We want to ground that energy so that we can have practical benefits in our lives. So today we explored grounding that. And then the experience of how that grounded power feels and what a difference it makes in our manifest reality. 
so that we can begin to start to have that awareness of our power and the power of our choices and the power of our awareness throughout the day. And the more, the more of that awareness we have, the more we can choose to be one pointed, committed to our inner truth, that inner light, so that we no longer betray ourselves for things that are not actually true. We don't want to betray ourselves for borrowed desires because those will not satisfy us and they will not satisfy our purpose in this life. And therefore, we will not only be betraying ourselves, we'll be betraying this whole world. We'll betray our loved ones if we don't honor who we truly are in this world because that's our purpose. That's why we're here. And everybody's waiting for that. Everybody's waiting for you to be authentically yourself. When you are authentically yourself, the world will celebrate and rejoice. So that's what we've begun to explore today. So it's a lot, but it's very, very gentle. So this should be very, um, very grounding, very gentle, very nourishing. Still, I understand if you're a very, very sensitive person, then it can, it can still be a little provocative. So just focus on the grounding. Focus on your connection with the earth. Focus on surrendering to the support. And as you're going throughout your day, remember, and this is very important, remember that your prayer is always being answered. So your prayer is what you access in the heart. It's that subtle posture. It's your inner truth. It is that buoyancy, that joy, that light. And that when you touch upon that and you say yes to that, when you intend that, your prayer is being, that is a prayer. It's a very powerful prayer. And that prayer is being answered instantly. And so as you go through the day, keep trusting that whatever happens is the answer to your prayer. So your mind might reject things. Your mind might judge things. But don't dismay. If ever you find yourself in doubt or dismaying or worrying, come back to remembering that my prayer is being answered. So then we use the what if technique. Okay, The what if technique is what if this right now is the answer already to my prayer? Complete, the complete answer. So then it, I change, I, I choose to change my relationship. Instead of it being one of, that's my enemy, it's my answer is being, my prayer is being answered. Now I want to know, how could that be? So if we surrender, more and more and more to the support and we start to see how it actually is true and then things get much nicer so we have to have the patience and the courage and the willingness and the faith to honor the truth which is that my prayer is being answered i have rejected this my whole life i've rejected the answer my whole life but not any longer now i i take a stand for that deeper truth, that real inner light. And whatever happens is being, is, is that inner light illuminating so that I can see. And in that seeing and non-rejection, then great beauty blossoms in our lives, but we just have to have faith. And also remember, Always be gentle. So it's not about endurance. It's not like endure hardship. It's about nourishment. So if there's, if it feels like struggle or pain or hardship, it's an invitation for a deeper surrender, a deeper nourishment. Gentle with yourself, 
be loving with yourself, be kind to yourself at all levels. Take a nap if you need a nap. Bless your food and bless your body. Very, very, very important. Don't overlook that. That Just that could change your life in beautiful ways. Be committed to that. Do that every time you're going to eat. Bless your food and bless your body. And your intention is enough. You don't have to have a particular feeling or experience of it. Just have that intention. I bless my food with love and nourishment and goodness. I bless my body with love and nourishment and goodness. That's, that's all. And then just trust that. And you do that consistently for a couple of months, you'll see huge difference. I promise you. So those are important things to really help to ground that energy because otherwise the energy just starts. Then you call that anxiety. So you have to, it has to be grounded in the body, in this physicality, in this world. Blessing is very powerful. So bless your food, bless your body. And don't stop there. Bless your life, bless those around you, but especially bless your food and bless your body because it's such a, make that a habit so every time you're going to eat just take it takes two seconds i bless the food i bless my body and you'll see you the, the energy will be grounded it'll be more stable you'll start to feel better so keep taking care of yourself okay i'm gonna go i'll see you tomorrow bye for now